Hey, what is up guys? It's Arnik and welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to take a look at how you can get and more importantly give others control over time in your motion graphic templates, which is especially useful for things like lower thirds or information displays where you cannot know beforehand how long it needs to be shown. This video is somewhat related to my previous short series on motion graphic templates. So if you haven't seen any of those, go check them out up there. And now, without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, so what we have here is a simple text animation with some background action to make things a little more interesting to look at. But we are only focusing on the text today. So, as you can see, this is a very basic setup using text animators to increase the tracking over time and combining position offset and opacity to bring in the line of text. To turn this into a motion template, you need to open the Essential Graphics panel, so Window and Essential Graphics. Drag the source text in there and boom, there you go. More on that in the video linked in the upper right corner. In order to make the text animator function properly, all we gotta do is work the offset values. As I did with these two keyframes going from negative 100 to positive 100%. If you export your template as it is right now, you'll have issues when you need to shorten or lengthen either animation or display duration. And this is where expressions come to aid. For the expression that we're gonna type in just a bit, we need a set of slider controls, preferably on a separate layer. Hold down Ctrl and Alt on PC or Command and Option on Mac and hit Y on your keyboard to create a new adjustment layer and add a slider control effect. Let's name this one Animate In Speed. And with this being a template, we have to regulate which values this slider control can be set to. So right click the slider and go to Edit Values. Type in a minimum as well as a maximum value and click OK. Keep in mind these numbers correspond to seconds in the animation. With that said, you can see that dragging the slider will only go as far as our boundaries are set to. Also, as the name of our slider suggests, we also need another slider for the outgoing animation. So duplicate the slider control with Ctrl or Command D and rename the slider to Animate Outspeed. Well, who would have thought? And then we just need one more slider for the duration of display. Ctrl and Command D to duplicate and rename to Duration. For this one, the value's gotta be a little different though. I mean, what good would a line of text do if it's accidentally set to be displayed for half a second only? Now let's get into the nitty gritty. Alt and Option click the stopwatch next to Offset to open the expression panel. First off, we need to define a few variables. Let's start with T equals and t equals time minus in point. That way t will always be zero at the time where this layer starts. Next we need the speed at which the animation will come in. So I guess a i s animate in speed is a reasonable name. So a i s that equals and now we go and take the pick whip and drop it onto the animate in speed slider control we just created before. Okay, great. Now we're telling After Effects what to do with these variables. You're going to type linear with opening and closing brackets. Linear is a predefined function within After Effects, which interpolates certain values and maps them to others. The first value is the function's indicator. The second and third is the range between which the function is to be executed. And finally, the last two numbers are the remap values. Lower end first and upper end last. Now let's fill the spots with our values at hand. Within the brackets, our first input is our previously defined variable t. So we tell linear to look at the time from the moment the layer starts, then comma, zero, because we want the function to fire the very moment of our layer's in point, followed by another comma and our second variable for animate in speed. Put another comma and the last two digits will basically be the same as we had our keyframes set before. So negative 100, 100. 
If that was a little bit too fast, here's a quick recap. Dear buddy Linear, take the time from the layer's in point, T, and please remap everything within the range from zero to animate in speed, so AIS, with zero being negative 100 and AIS being 100. And now let's play back. As promised, when the layer starts, the animation kicks off. But this is kind of too fast for what we're going for. So to lengthen the animation, all you need to do is to move the animate in speed slider over by just a bit or entering a specific value and that's it. But we also want to be able to adjust the out animation. Currently the text just stays until the end of the composition. For this tutorial, let's go with a basic fade out. But we ain't gonna do that with boring keyframing, right? Instead, let's again take advantage of the expression. Alt or Option click the stopwatch for opacity, define the time T, same as before, and the second to animate out speed this time, so AOS. And as we want to be able to define how long the text is supposed to be displayed, we need the third variable for duration, D, equals pick whip onto the duration slider, and that is all we need in terms of variables. For the animation, we're actually going to use a very similar function to linear, and it goes by the name of ease out. Basically, we need exactly the same order and value set as for linear. Only this time the function needs to look at time t while in the range of duration d until duration d plus animate out speed, AOS, and map those values to 100 opacity all the way down to zero opacity, making the text fade out that way. So the very moment the desired duration time of display is reached, D, the fade begins and lasts for the length we set as animate out speed. To turn all this into a fully fledged template, simply drag the sliders into the essential graphics panel, name them accordingly, and that's it. Well, and there you have it. I think this is a really good way to add some controllability to emotion templates. I hope you were able to follow along throughout the video and if you ran into any issues or problems, let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, you might also want to check out any of these videos around me on creating templates in the first place and automating different elements. And now, smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't already and ring that bell to be notified about future videos. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!